It was a rather grey world at that time. The country was uh, occupied by the Soviet army. And that's it. There's famous poet in Hungary, and he said, I don't have a mother, I don't have a father, I don't have a country, I don't have God. But I think I completed that. In Hungary, growing up, you were either a proletar, which is you were an industrial worker, or you were a farmer, which means you were a peasant, or you were an intellectual, which is teacher, engineer. I drew a lot, became a warrior, I had no playmates so much, moved a lot in the city. So that was also made, made it complicated to, to feel home. So I, I was shifting and drawing became a vehicle to express my frustration. I never thought at the time that that's going to be my uh, way of earning a living. I started out as an architect, and my drawing style is still line, if you notice. And the colors just filled in, there is no rendering there. You have to create a legible, clear, visible representation of something. So if, if you look at it, there is no argument. You can recognize that it's a cat or an elephant or a building or a trash can, you know? And so I love the Art Nouveau. I love the objects, I love the poster art, publishing, architecture. I loved uh, Fulon. Klimt I loved, toulouse Rotlek I loved, Degas I loved. I think Degas is incredible. I did posters, movie posters, for younger audience and they used to make posters for imported films. So I was lucky to make Casanova poster for Fellini and <clears throat> a few Hungarian new directors who were just 10 years older than me. And uh, I did uh, classical music, some rock and roll, and fairy tales for publishing houses. During my uh, graphic design presence, I got lucky to see the Yellow Submarine. And I was, it blew my mind. So I got fascinated to see my drawings moving. And I did a six minutes film on my own animation film where I drew everything. So it was like 6,000 drawings. Worked 24 years. Gobble, gobble, meaning a guy eats, starts coming to a restaurant, starts eating, gets bigger, and grows out of the building. The building pops because he's so huge. Can't fit in. Walks around, eats everything from randomly in the city, and uh, out grows the globe and eats the sun. And then it suddenly shrinks, starts burning, because the sun is in its stomach, and, and it burns down and shrinks, and, and the camera pulls back, and we see him as a fried egg in a pan. Cook puts it out to a plate, and waiter brings it out to the next guest. So it's sort of a cyclical gobble gobble. And then I ended up in France, luckily I never went back. This Paris setting, which is a very elegant and decadent, even though we were very modest and so to speak, poor, living in a rather semi-Arab neighborhood which we can afford, and that's another color which in Hungary I wasn't exposed to any ethnicity. So in communism there were no African Americans or blacks or, or no Oriental people. I felt like a zombie first, but uh, eventually, you know, you, you, you quickly adjust and, and then uh, I got used to the French uh, and uh, tried to see another country. U.S. came first on the list and they accepted us and landed in Los Angeles. L.A. and America was another shock because then America is totally different than Europe. And, and this postmodern started and Derrida and, and uh, everything I learned had to be thrown out the window 
That's very bizarre because uh, I'm coming from rather a Bauhaus type of school, which you could summarize like function and form is the same. So it was a brand new value system with the West and all this commercialization and, and, and uh, two minute lifetime of anything. So here's a guy who, I didn't have a home in Hungary, I didn't have a home in France. I hardly had a home in Los Angeles. I had this petty bourgeois mindset that I'd love to have, a, have to, I'd love to have a decent bourgeois living. Not in a negative way, it just means you dress well, your food is, uh, is provided and, and you can afford a trip here and there and you buy your books and you entertain yourself. That's luxury to me. So I, I ended up in New York. And luckily I ran into somebody, uh, Robert Best at uh, the New York Magazine, and they hired me and they redesigned the magazine, so I did the Garten, which is a, a conclusion of last week's topics, was well, part of the magazine, the newly designed magazine. So I was very lucky to get that in a year later or so, and, and that I landed up next to everybody's toilet. So in a way, in a way you know, that was really made me uh, visible. And then things started to come my way, and then um, I got a little bit of a push. Really, I feel I'm an outsider. I'm really an oddball guy who managed to sort of, uh, like a jackal, you know, I, I sort of really eat whatever the bigs are, leave behind, kind of. Really. Here and there they make a mistake and leave me a better chunk and then just and turn it to something else and, and, and that helps my career. We could say that too. And so I did the Zoom book shortly after that. Zoom is a, Zoom is a, it's a cheap movie or a book format movie. You open the book on the left side is on a blank page. The right side you see the image. I show something which becomes detail in the next image. And then the together, this two becomes a detail in the next image. And, it, and, and it, it's like Russian dolls, they are in each other. So finally you pull off and it turns out that whatever you see in, you see in a farm and the farm is not a farm because it's a toy set, which is on the cover of the magazine, on the lap of the little boy who is sitting next to a pool, but the pool is not a pool because it's on a, on a cruise ship, which is a poster on the bus, which is in the city. The bus is in the city, the city is on the TV screen, and the cowboy is watching it in Arizona, and the whole Arizona image becomes a stamp, goes to the Solomon Islands, and, and we, we fly away from there, and we see the earth is small. So it just shows that we live in a universe, or I felt that by that time, you know, living in so many places, been shocked by so many things, I mean, I have no homeland, really. I have, uh, what's my uh, reference point? I think Zoom is my reference point. It's like I'm home everywhere, really, and um, I'm a speck, and the Earth is a speck in the galaxy. So, I don't know, I, I love the images. I drew a lot, but basically that was, what is a plumber? I'm, I'm a plumber. I'm a man for hire. I do drawings. They pay me for it. You know what I mean? That's always considered. Because I never had this kind of a, you know, brain tumor that, oh, I'm doing art. Come on. You draw. It's not really that fancy thing. It's a, it's a very straightforward, practical application. So I draw for a living. I like to say that and I'm not ashamed of it. It's a decent, at, at least I give something for the buck. It's a magic image making. This is so esoteric, it's just truly particles. <laughs>